and I'm going to talk about solving the uh, DynamoDB event bridge pipes problem. My name is Jason Wadsworth. I am the Chief Architect and Trust Department at Armonino, which is an, occult, uh, an accounting firm. Don't ask me how I started an accounting firm because I really can't answer that. I'm really a startups guy. But So what are event bridge pipes? Uh, event bridge pipes are a way to connect two services within AWS that don't kind of have a natural connection. An example of this is DynamoDB Streams and event bridge events, which was perfect because I actually had a use case for that. We uh, normally will send out events, like if a user was created, updated, deleted, we'll send an event uh, via event bridge. And actually the way we did this uh, before all this was we had a Lambda function that read off DynamoDB stream, uh, formatted a message and sent it via event bridge. <clears throat> so event bridge pipes, in theory, should remove that. I'm like, great, opportunity to, to change something. So this is the data that I'm saving. As you can tell, it looks a little bit different between what I'm saving to DynamoDB and what I want to send to EventBridge. We use the single table pattern in DynamoDB. If you're not familiar with it, check it out. Uh, Alex Debris, Debris has some great stuff on it, um, but the PK and SK, partition key and sort key. So as you can see, the PK has my ID in it. SK is just an indicator of the type of record it is. And then notice groups, there is an array of strings. Seem pretty straightforward. Uh, we can do some basic mapping from, from the source into the destination and it wouldn't be a big deal. But it uh, turns out DynamoDB actually stores things a little bit differently. This is actually what that record looks like in DynamoDB. And again, it wasn't that big of a deal because it's just like adding .s to most things if you're thinking JSON path. But the last one's where it gets interesting, groups. Um, it doesn't store it as an array of strings. It stores it as an L object with an array of objects with an S object that is a string. Now, I'm not exactly a JSON path guru, but I played around with a little bit and I came up with this and this should work, right? So in theory, it uh, takes a star out of the L and grabs all the strings and this JSON path seemed like it was gonna work. This is what the structure is for uh, formatting this for the, the destination to, to do some uh, transform, but it didn't work. It took me a little while to figure out exactly what the problem was. It turned it out that it didn't like that uh, L star thing there at all. And so I, after playing around with it a little bit, I just kind of gave up on it. Um, I didn't need groups right away. So I'm like, you know what? I'll punt that, do that later, <clears throat> come back to it. Somebody else will solve that. So it turned out not long after that, somebody uh, in the AWS community builder program uh, put a message in the Slack channel and was like, hey, I have this problem. It's exactly what I'm doing here. Like exactly the only difference is they called it roles, I called it groups, everything else is identical. So I'm like, okay, great. I'm gonna join that Slack channel or that Slack message and see what's going on. Somebody's gonna solve this problem. I'm gonna implement that solution, fantastic. Um, nobody implemented the solution. So I'm like, okay, well, let me see if I can figure this out. So I took a stab at it and came up with this. And this actually ended up working. So inside of EventBridge, uh, EventBridge pipes, you can actually add what they call an enrichment step. And an enrichment step just kind of stands in the middle. And so you can call different things. Uh, you can call a Lambda function. Uh, I'm going to call an AWS step function. <clears throat> and uh, it just takes the input from, from the source side and then takes the output and sends it to the destination. Great, simple solution. This is what my, <clears throat> my step function looks like. As you can see, it's not really very complicated. Uh, it has a map state because they're passing an array. Inside that, I just do a pass state. And that pass state has uh, basically the same uh, JSON path that I mentioned uh, or showed you before. Of course, it's formatted differently because every uh, seems like everybody in AWS has to make sure that you're well aware of the fact that they work on two pizza teams and never talk to each other. So it's a little bit different, but basically the same. <clears throat> so I actually produced a blog post for that. Everything's great. Um, I'm happy. And not long after that, I get an email from AWS from their, their product manager on EventBridge Pipes. And he's like, hey, saw your blog post. We fixed it. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, they sent me a message about uh, my blog post. They noticed that they fixed the problem. I put a little asterisk next to it because um, it wasn't quite right initially, but they worked on it a little bit. We got there. So happy, things are working well. <clears throat> um, I've got my solution in place. And, um, but then I'm talking to AWS about this uh, through that conversation. And I'm like, is this actually really okay? Should I be doing it this way? Uh, so best practices inside DynamoDB streams say that you should have no more than two consumers on any individual stream. Well, um, because I'm sending both, uh, I'm sending a created event, a deleted event, an updated event. And by the way, I'm using a single table pattern, which means that I have multiple objects that I could be sending out of the same table. I have a lot more than two streams. So I stepped back a little bit and I thought, okay, well, how can I solve this in a way that still allows me to use EventBridge pipes, don't have to write code, uh, can still do this, but not have, have um, multiple streams on it. So um, I 
stepped back a little bit and like came up with a solution. And basically I removed uh, a step and I, I went directly from EventBridge uh, or DynamoDB streams through pipes directly to step functions, which is, which is a valid destination. And uh, I was a lot, able to basically send all my messages there, right? I do some basic filtering things that I don't want to send uh, messages for, but all of them are all in the same step function. And the step function ends up looking a little bit like this. It's a bit more complicated. Um, and actually ends up being more complicated if you have different types in there. But the idea is inside that same uh, uh, map function, again, getting one, one uh, record for each one of the records that are coming through the stream, <clears throat> the first thing I do is a simple choice state is figure out, is this an insert? Is this an update? Is this a delete? Uh, create a slightly separate message based on each one of those. And then I actually am using the SDK integration within step functions to call my event bridge uh, event <clears throat> because it actually has a really great uh, integration there that allows me to kind of format the message a little bit better. I could have just taken this output and sent it directly to event bridge, still done this as an enrichment step. This actually ended up being a little cleaner. So that's where my uh, solution ended up and that's really about all I have. Thank you very much.